Hello and welcome back to Paris for our Autumn Winter 24 Women's Wear Coverage. I'm Editor Hattie Malik and this is our Fashion Features Editor, Joshua Graham. <laughs> Quite the mouthful. Um, we want to talk to you about Star vs. Substance today and um, kicking off with Loewe. What Jonathan Anderson do has done at Loewe is so fascinating. It's, you know, someone was saying to me the other day who's not that interested in fashion but is very aware of Loewe, they kind of were saying, oh, is Loewe a new brand? Like they. You know, people weren't aware of Loewe a few years ago. It's this heritage Spanish um, label. Jonathan has made it exciting, relevant, and talked about for the masses. I was really interested, kind of, this morning I was reading a feature Lucy McGuire did for Vogue, Vogue Business, all about Loewe's kind of TikTok strategy, the fact that they've built up 1.8 million followers and 19.3 million likes on TikTok since launching there um, on I think 2022 so that's kind of a year and a bit and mm -hmm. um, they've amassed this massive following and I think that really got me thinking to that idea of kind of style versus substance and how Jonathan every season presents these very exciting and abstract ideas about fashion and silhouettes he's always kind of seeking out a new silhouette a new idea kind of this season it was about the idea of the belt that kind of finished half across the shirt and became kind of part of a silhouette you know a couple of seasons ago it was the massive high-waisted trousers there's always kind of an exploration into new silhouette but that this kind of strangeness and very fashion idea i guess but that excites the masses it's always rooted in something kind of deeper and more psychological for Jonathan but I think it's just interesting you know there's been the conversation um this season with the row banning phones at their show mm -hmm. and this idea of perpetuating that idea of you know a very exclusive brand identity and Loewe is still eye-wateringly expensive but they've managed to really straddle this balance between this being a heritage house rooted rooted and kind of craftsmanship and you know they have the most beautiful leather like handbags and shoes and sunglasses but it's all kind of fun and quirky and it ties back into these shows which are these showcases for kind of these you know to quote the CEO in the Spoke Business article he said they're content machines mm -hmm. and they're content machines for the masses and I love seeing these collections which do communicate with the masses but they also have, they're not simple, they have depth, they have ideas to them, they're completely style with substance. I think if we're going to talk about style and substance, I think that Loewe is kind of the absolute definition of yeah. that. Yeah, I think it's really incredible to see how much Loewe ignites the imagination with, with everyone um, because I think it could be so easy to make what Jonathan does there quite pretentious. Mm. Um, there's so much research that goes behind everything he does. There's so much innovation that he imbues in the brand. Uh, one of my favorite looks was that overcoat that had a fur trim, but it wasn't mm. really fur, right? It it's was, wood. It's wood. And Amazing. And it's carved out to look like the legs of like a Chippendale chair. Mm. And these things are fun and they're interesting and everyone will see it and kind of be in awe and I think that speaks to Jonathan's idea of like fashion as pop culture fashion yeah. as culture it's not trying to exclude anyone it's always trying to include everyone's imagination and creativity I think that idea of kind of something not being pretentious and being accessible is really key for the web mm -hmm. You know because this is you know these opening looks these dresses with these cutaway details around the waist and then the kind of half belt that I, kind of big kind of almost pirate buckle that i was mentioning you know these are actually beautiful wearable dresses and you've got mm -hmm. kind of beautiful tailored balloon pants and coats in this like collection parachute cargoes i loved i thought they yeah were amazing. completely beautiful but then you know as i was saying it's underpinned by these ideas the set this season was this kind of a very Irish green, I thought, speaking to Jonathan. <laughs> but it's kind of green set, which actually was speaking to the paintings of Albert York, a painter who was kind of collected by lots of high society women, but they're kind of these beautiful landscapes and still lives, and they were kind of dotted around the show space. And Jonathan was saying backstage after the show that he was thinking about how we consume things. You know, you think about the art market, that can be very pretentious in how you kind of collect yeah, art exactly. in terms of status rather than kind of having interest in it. And he was. He was thinking about that um, in terms of kind of 
yeah like how we kind of consume product and things um and i liked then that there was that threading through in this collection of in those opening dresses these kind of kitsch kind of florals which kind of granny yeah and that was kind of thinking about high society kind of wallpapers and ceramics particularly kind of english ceramics um it did remind me of autumn into 23 the opening that autumn into 23 when he did the florals and they were based on 1950s dresses and these kind of almost blurred photocopies mm. of those florals so it was interesting to see kind of that continuation of jonathan likes to change there's always an underpinning of class and context to what he does which i think makes it really interesting but it's not as you say pretentious no. or so intellectual that it's not accessible you know those ideas of high society women then came through and kind of the radishes and the asparagus print and they're kind of on a very surface level just fun prints which you know have done really well on social media but yeah. that it continues that language of playfulness and a conversation with the consumer exactly. it's not a kind of exclusive you must wear this it's kind of a a back and forth and like I think those little kind of pirate booties and the beautiful beaded floors will do really well as yeah. as well I think that this as I said is like the perfect mixture of style and substance yeah. and both in tune you can also really see how it's going to trickle down to the everyday wardrobe mm. because his play with proportion is so incredible and maybe a bit exaggerated for mm. shows but I mean toned down fast fashion is really going to pull from everything yeah. he's done at Louis Bay just will go to Zara <laughs> yeah, and you exactly. can see what everyone's going to be in parachute pants next you season. can see where everyone's getting their inspo from let's talk about style and substance at Nina Ricci by Harris Reed yes this is the third collection by Harris Reed at Nina Ricci and the show was at a 19th century auditorium but you wouldn't really be able to tell because from floor to ceiling everything was covered in like it was like a black box the lighting was very dim it was so dark in there did it feel I mean I wasn't there you did the mm -hmm. show did it feel because I, I was at Harris show last month and it, that's very much the vibe there. Mm -hmm. Is it a similar, it is was, it a similar feeling? Because the Nina Rich shows I've been to before have been very bright. Yeah, like I thought it was, it was very surprising because it was okay. it felt a lot more vampy and I'm going to probably okay. use vampy a lot when I'm talking <laughs> about this collection. But very dark, um, the show starts, it's like flashing lights, very Hollywood paparazzi vibes. Um, model of the moment, Colin Jones did her real maybe even more over the top than usual stomp Walk. down the runway and she was joined by a slew of models of the moment right now like Alex Kansani and um, Dalton Dubois, Lindsay Wixon made a cameo and Ashley Graham and the collection really and like going down to this idea of, of vampy mm. there was for me almost this nostalgic idea of fashion um, it was very the chic years of fashion you know Yves Saint Laurent and thinking Alaya, about Paris as well. thinking about Paris but I don't think anything in this collection was necessarily effortless it played on glamour it played on this very singular idea of, of glamour this dark very sexy very seductive but still very exaggerated and over the mm. top in how Harris plays with Soulette it's almost like he can't contain himself so even though there were these really sheathed elegant Saint Laurent dress moments they were kind of paired with these croc really high gloss croc belts it gave me big Aliyah vibes I think there were ideas in here with kind of Harris it was interesting I didn't realize that Harris has actually moved part-time to Paris mm -hmm. now and um, you can see how Paris and that idea of you know Nina Ritchie is a French brand and mm -hmm. that idea has always been very connected to the Paris woman but I do think that this because my problem with this collection is it is the style of the Paris woman but without that substance yeah. of the real meaning of who she is like coming back to what you were saying about that forceful styling yes. it's like I think those lace bodysuits and the kind of fishnet tights it's just not quite the right lace it looks cheap and that brings a forcefulness and a feeling of mm -hmm. knockoff I've said in the past that like I love when a European designer kind of looks at Americana because it's almost mm -hmm. this very romantic idea that an American who lived it wouldn't be able to conjure up. I think very similarly with Harris, but in a different way, in how he's created this fictitious Parisian woman that almost feels like a, a cartoon or like a real caricature. Mm. It was how the models stomped, it was all these clothes being so exaggerated in their, their Parisian-ness. Mm. 
I do appreciate and think it's the right move to move away from the big show pieces mm -hmm. that are very much aligned with Harris's own brand and that definitely were kind of in that debut, that Nina Ritchie debut, but it was definitely about the big kind of yeah. editorial dresses and the red carpet pieces. And I think my criticism at the time was the stuff wasn't very well made. Um, it felt like it was rushed. Um, and I think it's wise to move away from that. And I think we're possibly going in the right direction with him thinking about a more considered wardrobe rather than showstopper yeah. pieces. So I've been quite critical of Harris Reed at his brand and at Nina Ricci. I will say this collection wasn't the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. There were pieces that I thought were really interesting, like again that high gloss crop coat with this sheer link popping mm. out. I could see someone really wearing that and owning that and feeling super confident in that. And there was kind of a pulled back restraint with this versus mm. the campiness of his past. But again, I don't think he can really contain himself and do that because the ties were too much. The head pieces covering faces, these like curves, I thought was too much. Um, I think it veers into the realm of feeling costumey. It feels costumey. Um, it feels very costumey. And it's, you know, for instance, you messaged that, you mentioned that crop belt number. Yeah. And in the pictures, at least, it's kind of, you've got the bare breasts above it and they're kind of, they're not, there's not been cutouts made to, to kind of cut the breasts. They're just kind of squished up mm -hmm. and they don't, it doesn't look supportive, beautiful, yeah. attractive. Um, and I think going on yeah. to something Harris is really passionate about is, is diversity and body diversity and he always has um, curvier models on the runway. One of my critiques with this is does it count if the curvier models are only in these stretched dresses mm -hmm. that gives them absolutely no support that are much easier to make than, than yeah, I think creating that high gloss crock jacket for Ashley Graham rather than for mm. the size two. I think it's that's like a real industry-wide yeah. problem and I would have thought, you know, Harris's show in London last month, there was a lot of bigger girls and they looked gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And I'm sad that he didn't bring that to Paris. And I think maybe to kind of sum this up, it's that there's that thing of an American in Paris looking at what their idea of Paris is and forgetting to bring some of themselves yeah. to it perhaps. And maybe that's where the substance comes from, a bit of kind of, you need an engagement and a thought from the designer and not just kind of a looking at the style and the surface level of things. Yeah. I also think it lacked finesse. Yeah. I think he was pulling from real masters of fashion and masterful ideas of fashion but not doing it with this eye of perfectionism mm. that I think the greats really approach fashion with. It's a shame, but I think, you know, as we say, we're moving in the right direction with what sort of wardrobe sure. we're thinking about. I think it's better than last time. My so. problem with that is is the patience we give someone like Paris Reed, who's, who's very privileged and of a type, a type that I think in fashion right now has, is being really championed by the powers that be, whether it's the big monopoly publications or, or the big fashion ecosystems but why i think harris is yeah. very creative um but i think there are a billion creative designers out there who haven't been warranted this privilege haven't been warranted this platform and that's why for me it's incredibly frustrating that season after season it's almost like we're giving this person a pass and this isn't a critique on an individual this is a critique on the entire fashion system. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, this conversation we were having in London about a group of designers as well mm -hmm. and where that support and focus is going and how easy it seems to be for some designers to get these positions and get the support for their brands. Um, and Get the I'm, coverage and get the platform. But I'm and... also desperate to know where the amazing designers and makers of our next generation are and I think we're looking at the wrong places sometimes. Um, but thank you for watching, and we will see you next time for more Paris reviews. Bye. Bye.